Please call us in our people in the school council. Second Corinthians. Let's go on to Second Corinthians, everybody. Welcome to this afternoon's teachings. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. We began to look at the teaching. 5 verse 17. Are we all here? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. We're gonna be doing our teachings again. Remember, we're gonna look at the subject in Christ. Can we say in Christ? In Christ. Christ. Alright, second Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 5. Verse 2, 17, sorry. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Second Corinthians 5, 17. And I will say. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, and the new has come. The old has gone, and the new has come. The old has gone, and the new has come. So which means that if anyone is truly in Christ, if he is in Christ truly, he is a new creation. Which means that the old, the old habits, the old man has gone, but the new has come. Father, bless your word this afternoon. Help us to understand the scriptures, Holy Ghost. On our own, we cannot do anything, Holy Spirit. We reverence your presence, Holy Spirit. Teach us, Lord Jesus, to know your word, to know you through your word. Bless your word in our hearts this afternoon. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let Jesus be exalted. Let the glory go back to God the Father. And we thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ, mighty name we pray. So we can look at the subject in Christ. And I said that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have to be cautious and we have to know and we have to note and we have to be ready that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Whether the church believes it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether I believe it or not, the Bible makes it clear that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And if you look at the, the, the mission of this church, is to preach the undiluted word. Means we have to call a spade a spade. White is white, black is black. And our vision is to prepare believers not to make money. Please follow me very well. Our, our vision is to prepare believers. A believer is the one who believes in Christ Jesus. And I've accepted him and the Lord has said him. Don't be in a church being Christ. Don't be in church being Christ. Because when judgment comes, God will judge the church. I will tell you. But those in Christ are those who are justified. We are justified by the blood of the Lamb. Those in Christ are justified before the Father. Those in church, somebody can be in church, but it's not in Christ. So what I'm saying here is, be in Christ. Even though I can be in a church of fellowship, the Bible says, for some of the assembly of brethren, which I need to be in, I need to be part of a church, but you have to understand the church it belongs to. Not all churches are churches. Some of us are here. Some of us are here. Thank God I'm not preaching for money. So I'll say the truth. Not all churches are churches. Some are marketplaces. Don't get me wrong. I'm not judging, I'm not condemning. But what I'm trying to say is, when in the end time where we see perversion, perversion in the church, I'm not talking about the world, the church. So a believer is a person who believes in Christ Jesus. And I've accepted him as the Lord has said. So we are here to prepare such people for the second coming. We are not preparing the church for the second coming. We are preparing believers. Not the church. Because church is looking for money. Looking for faith. That's no preparation to receive Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, when a bride, when you are getting married, when a bride goes getting married to the bride, the bride does not prepare for money. She prepares to receive the bridegroom. So we, we ought to be prepared to receive Christ, or to work on Christ, or to be married to Christ. Talking about the rapture. Are we together? So we, are, we have the mandate to prepare believers, those who are in Christ, for the second coming. Those who are in Christ, those who are in Christ, for the second coming. For Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Take it or leave it. He's coming soon. Be ready and live 
ready. And we also have the money to do what? To restore intimacy back to God through the Holy Ghost. Listen, gentlemen, the person you need most this end time is the person called the Holy Spirit. The person you need most this end time is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Because a man does not know a man prays for his spirit. My spirit knows me. Therefore, if you want to know me, know me by my spirit. Therefore, if you want to know God the Father, we want to know the thought of God, the third pattern of God. We have to know him by his spirit. The Holy Spirit has been given to us to help us as our helper this enter. For this enter, calamities will come. We we'll have you to stand. We we'll have you to walk on a narrow road. Is a person called the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. As hallelujah. So we have the mandate to prepare for Jesus is coming soon. So the church needs to inform us. Really inform us of Jesus coming. Please, let's, let's take this seriously. I know what he has been showing me. And when he shows me, I tell the church. So let's go back to the teaching this afternoon. We began to look at in Christ. I have to explain for us to understand that we have a mission and we have a vision. And our teachings are tied to the vision and the mission of the church. If you are so attentive, you understand what we are doing here. So we are we began to look at the subject in Christ. Now, when I studied the book of Ephesians, when I studied Ephesians from chapter 1 to chapter 6, you will see oftentimes you will see in Christ, in him, in Christ, in him, in Christ, in him. It's very common in the book of Ephesians. Study very well. Very common in Ephesians. It's in him. In Christ, in Him, in Christ. So God the Father wants me and you to be in Christ. So the scripture we read from in 2 Corinthians 5 17 says, If anyone, therefore, in anyone, therefore, if anyone, so you can choose to be in Christ or you can choose to be out of Christ. Then if you choose to be out of Christ on the day of judgment, you'll be out of the kingdom of God, you're out of heaven. That's why you say that, of course. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, Jesus said, no one goes to the Father except by me. No one enters heaven except through Christ. So if you're not in Christ, how do you make heaven? It's that simple. That's mathematics. It's just very simple. Hallelujah. So we began to read out the subject in Christ. And at last week, I talked about renunciation. You cannot, let's tell you, you cannot make heaven if you have not renounced yourself. Please, I'm not judging, I'm not condemning anybody. But I'm just I'm following the scriptures. You cannot make heaven without renouncing yourself. He said, therefore, if any man is in Christ, your son is an old man. The old man, flesh and blood, the old man cannot, does not have anything to do in the kingdom of God. It's a new man that has control. Therefore, it's a new man in Christ that has an inheritance in God's family. We are with Christ in God. Who? Not the old man, but the new man. The new man in Christ. So if he said, you have to deny yourself, you have to deny the old man, so that the new man can be made alive. If you don't deny the old man, the new man cannot be made alive. You must kill, you must deny the old man first, before the new man in Christ is made alive. So if you don't deny yourself, listen to me, it's a tough one. Yourself puts you on the broad road. But the new man walks on the narrow road. The narrow road is a narrow road that leads to eternity. Broad is a way that leads to destruction. The old man will put you on the broad road. The choice again is yours. Hallelujah. So last week I talked about renovation of self. That one of the elements, one of the elements of genuine repentance, you must denounce yourself. You cannot serve God with the old man. Because the old man is a man that cheats. The old man is the man that lies. The old man is the, is the man that grumbles, that kills. The old man destroys the old man. And God said, with the old man, you cannot walk with me. You have to be a new man in Christ. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, it's a new creation. So, you see, the Bible said, we are saved by grace of faith. You have to come to the point of knowing who Christ is and accepting him as a Lord and Savior. Therefore, you are not born a born again or a believer. Hallelujah. The rapture will happen. Listen to me. Rapture will soon happen. Pastor, since I was going to be hearing that, you are a joker. <laughs> rapture, Jesus says, I don't even know when I'll come. Only my father knows. But we 
he speaks to his servants. I know how many times he has shown me the rapture. I know how many times. I know what he showed me. Last week he showed me about famine. Famine in the world. And yesterday my wife was confirming something. The news is saying that they are, they are saying that 2020 there will be a lot of famine because of the, the pandemic economics of nations. So the effect of that will be seen in 2022. Famine, a lot of famine. Is that true? They showed me that last week famine in the world. He said, tell the church to be ready. Famine. Hallelujah. That's why, that's why I put myself in the position to hear God constantly. I, there are things I've renounced. I put myself in a place to always hear God. I was sitting down this morning on my sofa. I was hearing him clearly. Just sitting down. My son, Rafa, was in front of me. I was just hearing him. Ask God that it is. I was asking, asking this. How? You have to be in the place that the new man hears the fire. Listen to me, you don't need prophets. Renounce the world, renounce it, you will hear God clearly. Period. Life is that easy. You don't need a man of God to lay hands on you before things will work. No, you can be the prophet of your own. If truly you are in Christ. Because if you are in Christ, the life you live is no longer your life. You, you are living the life of Christ. That's why you are living the life of Christ. Whatever you ask the Father, the Father gives it to you. In my name. In my name. In my name. So if the old man cannot use the name of Jesus effectively, it's the new man that uses the name. Pastor, why do you say that? The seven sons of Skipper in Acts of Apostles, they could not use the name effectively. Why? Because they were, uh, they used the, 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 the Adamic nature to try to use the name of Jesus. It could not work. They were beaten. Why? Because only the new man has permission to use the name of Jesus. In my name, you shall cast out demons. That's why anyone has stand with authority in the name of Jesus, it happens. One is a new man. But you have to walk by your salvation daily and make sure you are still in the faith. It's a daily walk with Christ examining your life. I've gotten to a point where nothing moves me. I've gotten to a point where nothing in the world bothers me. I've gotten to the point where nothing in the world attracts me. I'm telling the Peter Give me Port Khalifa, I send it tomorrow. I take the money I put in the gospel, evangelism. That's a reality. Because one day we shall all return. Unto those I came. Unto those this day we return. But you, your soul will stand before the judgment seat and give an account. So much a hallelujah. So much a hallelujah. So last week we had to look at the relationship of self. Today we go a little bit further. We are looking at in Christ. What are the things that limit people? What are the things that they these people? Because they are not renowned self. It's a Jesus said, if anyone should come after me, which means he expects me and you to come after him, to follow him. Listen to me, we are made only when you follow Christ. He told Peter, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me. So if Peter did not follow him, Peter will never be made. Who makes men? Christ is the one that makes men. So if you are out of Christ, he will not make you. And you all, we all are created for a purpose. We want to pray for the sign. Your sign is only in prayer. It is God that reveals your sign to you. It is Jesus God that reveals your sign to you and your purpose. We all have a purpose. And you will all judge according to your purpose. Did you do the purpose or no? I thought going to school and being educated is what I want is maybe is a purpose for God. My life. But he revealed to me that young man. That's good, but that's the world standard. What I have, I know the plans I I know the plans I think towards you. Not of evil, but of good. Your education is good, but that's not the best for you. I didn't pray to you for that. Come and follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And I abandon all my significance. I'm a professor of health by virtue of status. He said, Come and follow me. I have to be humble to follow him. He said, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And you have to follow him. And I began to understand that God does not work with the limit. He works with the hunger. Those who are willing to deny themselves and follow him. He said, deny yourself, carry your cross and follow me daily. Yeah. Obedience, brokenness, surrender to God. Hallelujah. So we're going to look at renunciation. You want to renounce yourself in order to know the, the money for God for God. Today we continue with our ladies and gentlemen. Let's open with 2nd, our uh, first speaker, chapter 2, verse 11. 
We continue today with last week we saw renunciation of self, self denial. Today we're going to be looking at renunciation of the world. Renounce the world, deny the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And one of the things that one of the things that limits people today is that they believe us are their cell phones. Someone say talk to me. Please say. One of the things I notice limits people not to hear God clearly nowadays are their cell phones. Cell phones. Listen to me. If you can take away your phone for one week, come and tell me what you experience. Your spirit man will be allowed to hear anything spiritual. Your spirit man. But the cell phone is there to destroy people. Have you noticed when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is you don't pray, you first go check your WhatsApp. Have you noticed it? Talk to me somebody, let's be honest with ourselves. Check your WhatsApp first. So which means that you have your phone before Christ. That's the reality. We say priority that day is your phone messages, not Christ. Priority. Are we together? So I choose, personally, I choose to throw that thing off. After this, I throw it away, finish. I go and put it off, I throw it away. One, I need to be in a posture where I can hear God every second clearly. And to see the speaker. That's for my safety and the safety of the children and also the ministry. So, but if I'm distracted with phone, kaka, yes, kaka, kaka. no, yes, 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 yes. the enemy is crafty. More crafty than you if you don't know. But I need the pastor to the Holy Ghost every second for me to start and walk on narrow. So what's it happening? Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2. Let's continue, please. First Peter chapter 2. We are doing Bible studies on Fridays. So we are looking at a lot of scriptures. First Peter chapter 2, verses 11. Are we on it? First Peter 2, verse 11. I read from the end of it again. First Peter 2, 11 says, Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which go against your soul. The emphasis is that I wanted to pick this. Uh, Paul was, uh, uh, sorry, Peter was addressing his address to us that uh, we need to understand now that we are strangers and pilgrims on earth. This earth is passing away. This earth is passing away and will pass away. We are strangers on earth. That's why the Bible said, Unto those man came, and unto those men shall perish. Unto those men shall perish. Why? Because we are pilgrims on earth. We are passing by. Where are our great grandparents? Where are they? Where are they? If the earth is our home, where are they? If the earth is our home, in John chapter 14, what did Jesus say? I, I go to my father's house. It, it is expedient for me to go to my father's house. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I will go and come back and take you to be with me. If the earth was truly really our home, why did Jesus say, in my father's house, there are many mansions for you? If the earth was truly really our home, Jesus would be preparing mansions in his father's house for me. John chapter 4, for me there. Which means that we are strangers from earth. You need to, you need to live as a stranger on earth. When you live as a stranger on earth, this material thing, the world will not bother you. Don't get me wrong. Don't be lazy. I'm not preaching laziness. I don't encourage laziness. Hallelujah. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying fall your hands. No. The Bible condemns laziness. Walk here. But your motive should not be to, 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 to stay in the world. Your motive will be one day I shall meet the Lord Jesus. Prepare to meet the Lord Jesus. Prepare to meet the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's go. You see, everything will... Uh, okay, let's go back to Second Peter, please. That's First Peter. Go to Second Peter three. Second Peter chapter three. That was First Peter. Second Peter three eleven. Second Peter three eleven quickly. Second Peter three eleven says, "Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You want to live holy and godly lives." If the earth will pass away, if you are strangers on earth, therefore you ought to live God lives. Why? Because the one who has called you is holy. The one whom you prefer to serve is holy. 
Jesus Christ is holy. The Spirit of the Father is called the Holy Spirit. So he said, if you know that you are stranger from the Messiah, you are passing by. This one is not my home. I'm just passing by. Why are you passing by to? Some people are passing by to hell. Some people are going to heaven. But ladies and gentlemen, it is not of your making. But your lifestyle is important. How obedient you are to the word of God will determine what you're making at the end. Heaven is real, hell is real. But Jesus stands to determine who goes where. But ladies and gentlemen, you have the role to play. Obey the word of God. Live in obedience. Live in the holy life. Live in the holy life. Jesus Christ will judge us all one day. You have a book, I have a book. Our books will open on that day. Judgment is real. Someone say talk to me. <laughs> Someone say talk to me. It's a message you don't hear anymore because we are looking for money. Hallelujah. Now, first, go down to verse 13. Verse 13 says, but, but in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Go down to verse number 14. So then, dear, again, dear friends, Peter is saying, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, to what? You are looking forward to make heaven with Jesus on that day. You are looking forward for the rapture. You are looking forward to meet Jesus Christ. He said, therefore, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. And at peace with Christ. You cannot have peace with God if you are not in Christ. Hallelujah. Peace with God is when you are in Christ. When you are in Christ, then you are justified by the blood of the Lamb. So if you are out of Christ, there is no justification for you. So if there is no justification, there is condemnation. So those who are in Christ are justified by the law of the Lamb. That's why Romans 8 verse 1 says, Therefore there is no, no condemnation for those who are, talk to me, for those who are in church, those who are in Christ Jesus. Again, in Christ. There's no, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Because the blood of the Lamb was the justified before the Father. They are all righteous before the Father. Why? The blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. It's the make sure that you are found spotless and blameless. And at peace with you on that day. Because if your garments are with sin, you know, garments are stained with sin, you will let be behind. You choose to be left behind. That's not the will of God. But God is righteous. He will not change the standard because of you or me. No. God remains God. Above all, He's called God Almighty. Hallelujah. He's God Almighty. Thank you, Father. So let us not ignore the warnings of the Lord Jesus. He's telling the church to go back to the place of holiness. Telling you and me. Remember, I'm also preaching to myself. I'm the first person to receive this message. Me and also, because I'll be judged also. I'm not exempted. Hallelujah. I'm not above the scriptures. Are we together? So, in Christ, we are holy. Both within and without. Within means our heart. Without means how? Without. Our lifestyle without. We should be holy within and without. Within, because sometimes we can dress well without. Without, we look good, but within is water. Within is wicked. Within the heart is perverse. Deception of the heart. Christ said, you want to hold it within your heart and without. Let men see you and say, this one really is born again. Hallelujah. Let men see you and say, the Bible said, let, let your light so shine before men that they might see your light and give glory back to God. That an example of a believer. Glory be to God. So we're going to look at again the renunciation of the world. The first thing we're going to talk about is Renounce worldliness. Renunciation of worldliness. First John chapter 2, verse 10. First thing is renounce worldliness. The world. Sadly to say, church today has embraced or married the world. That's why there's no differentiation between a born again and a church goer. Somebody who says church goer thinks that they are born again because they are all interwined and intermingled. No, I, I must not be a photocopy and an original. An original is made manifest only when I'm truly in Christ. Not in a church. Are we together? First John chapter 2, verse 15. Are we all there? First John 2, 15. And I says, Do not love the world or things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in. Here. Is that your Bible? Me?
Maybe I wrote it somewhere. Is that your Bible? Uh, this is this is John speaking. He said, "Do not love the world. Do not love the world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. If you say you love God and you still love the world, you are deceptive." Can I say the truth? If you say you love Jesus Christ and you still love the world, if you say you love Christ and you are still married to the world, you are deceiving yourself. Galatians 6 Don't be deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatever a man should want, that shall be. God is not mocked, he knows it all. So you can say, some of us say, I love you, Jesus. We can even sing worship songs. I love you, Jesus. But you are still married to the world. That's not love. Someone spoke to me. Someone spoke to me. Sister, say me very well. Sister, can you tell me that your husband is married to you and is married to another woman? Can you, can you truly say he's married to you? Boldly, confidently, can you say that? I don't think so. Are we together? Women understand the place of one to one love. Are we together? Please, can I push a little bit here? Are we together? When God made man originally, the Bible said he took the rib of man. He took the rib out of man and made a woman. So what you are looking for is not outside, what you are looking for is inside. Amen. So what you are looking for is inside, not outside. It's inside. So we are deceived by going outside, trying to move outside. No, what you are looking for is inside. Now when man saw the woman, he said, this is the for the bone. Because she's like me. I've seen my name. I've seen the one. I'm, I know. I've seen the one. So the woman understands the place of one to one. Then when sin came into the world, men began to perverse to discreet themselves. And they were getting married to seven, ten, eleven wives. Solomon came and had I don't know how many, thousand plus. When sin came into the world, that was not the original plan of God. It was one to one. Because of sin, we now see how there's distortion. Especially in the issue of marriage. That's why God told the woman, in childbearing, you shall have pain. And two things he said. In childbearing, number one, in childbearing, you shall have pain. Number two, he said, and, and your husband shall be your problem. Your husband. Okay. Because you can do anything for a woman, she can enjoy. But once she sees the husband dating another woman, she will not enjoy it. I'm not going to be women here. Can I hear hallelujah? Read me, can I say I will? I'm not saying God mistreat a woman. Sorry, I don't push that kind of thing. Men, I'm not a master. Don't do that. God will hold that account. What I'm just saying that a woman can endure all of this, but once she sees and she knows with evidence that you are getting another woman, you have spoiled it all. Because it's like saying that she's good for nothing. It's like saying that she's not worthy. It's like saying that she's useless. And no woman will take those kind of titles. Are we together? Because a real woman, a virtuous woman, wants to be appreciated. A virtuous woman wants to be uh, to be known, to be valuable. You are my all. They appreciate it. Are we together? Likewise, you cannot say you love Christ and you still love the world. It doesn't work that way. That's what church is doing today. That's what believers are doing today. We are still attached to the world. And seem to be in Christ, but we are in the world. It says, Therefore, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hallelujah. James 1 27. Renunciation of the world. James 1 27. Are we there? James 1 27. We are looking at renunciation. First thing is renunciation of the world. Are we there? Are we there? Verse 27 says, James 1, 27 says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their districts and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. From being polluted by the world. God does not want believers to be polluted by the world. A believer is a person, a believer is a person who is set apart. Paul, an apostle, set apart. Paul, a servant of Christ, set apart. Separated, 
from the world. We cannot be carrying the Holy Ghost and your marriage to the world. And we say, first John 4 4. Greater is he that is in me than who is in the world. The one that is in me is greater. But you are married to the one in the world. How, uh, how does that make sense? That you, you are married to the one in the world and you are saying that greater is he that is in me than you who is in the world. You are a joker. Means you are neither hot nor tall. You are neither in Christ nor in the world. And Christ is spiritual. Hallelujah. He says, he says, keep oneself from being polluted by the world. The world pollutes. The world pollutes. The world system, the Babylonian system pollutes. And remember, the Babylonian system never agreed with the things of God. Babylon never agreed, nor will ever agree with the things of Christ. Babylon will never. And the world is Babylonian. Hallelujah. James 4 4. Quick, please. James 4 4. Renunciation of worldliness. James 4 4. Let's see some few scriptures and we continue. James 4 4. James says, You are doctors people. Don't you know that friendship with the world? James is addressing you, addressing me, addressing the church. Don't you know? Look at Please look at it. Is this a good statement? Is this how we begin an introduction? You are doctors people. Please talk to me. If somebody comes to you and says, You are doctors man, don't you know that? It's not a good introduction. Is that true? But if you used to say here, means that it was more than, in fact, means maybe he had been advising them and they didn't take it. So he had to use a word that would bring their heart to know that. It's an emphasis. He said, You are God for people. Don't you know that? Friendship with the world is hated towards God. So when you are friendly to the world, you hate God. Period. Is the Bible. Is it your Bible or me? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes. Read your Bible, becomes one. Becomes a believer. Please read your Bible. Open your Bible. James 4 4. Let's read. It's Bible studies. We are doing Bible studies. I'm teaching. James 4 4. Are you on it? Please look for me. Look in your Bible. What the Bible says. Don't say, Pastor will say in the end. No, read your Bible. So on Fridays, come with the Bible. Come with the book and come with the Bible. James 4 4. It says, Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an an enemy say becomes an enemy, an enemy to an enemy of God. So if you're an enemy of God, when you pray for God answer, please talk to me, sir. Hello. If you're an enemy of God, when you pray for God answer, will it answer? So let's check ourselves. If you have been praying and we've not got the answers, check if you are truly a friend of God or an enemy of God. It may not be the witches in your father's houses. Don't get me wrong. I like more fair players. I know where I come from. Please, ladies and gentlemen, if I sit down with you and I tell you what happened to me, you'll be crying every second. You'll be lamenting for me. I came from, if I died and God brought me back to life. I died. Me, but I died. God brought me back to life. For this purpose of preaching the gospel. For this purpose. If not this purpose, I don't see any other thing. Why? He could bring me back to life. I'm just honest with you. I don't see. I died. For real. I'm not joking here. There's no other purpose why he brought me back to life. That's why I take the things of God seriously. My children can tell me. I don't joke with you. I don't joke when it comes to the things of God. I don't joke. And forever will I not. I know where I came from. Why I say this is because we need to understand that if we are friends to, if you are friends. A righteous man is the friend of God. And James says, James 5, 6, 16, he said, the prayer of a righteous man are very much. Or some versions say, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. What makes his prayer powerful and effective is not because he prays to God, it's the foundation of whom he's standing. He's standing on a righteous foundation called Christ, the Son of God. It is a foundation that gives him the impetus for his prayer to be answered. Pastor, what foundation? He is standing on Christ for the Lord. So it is because of Christ that the Father answered, not because of his life. But his lifestyle attracts the Father to answer his prayers. Why? Because his lifestyle carries Christ and shows Christ daily. His lifestyle 
a righteous man. But uh, John 9 verse 1 says, when they sing and pray, God has not answered. So you can be walking in church, you can be even ministering in church, if you live in sin, God will not answer the prayers. Because I dwell amongst me. A prophet of God said that. Is that true? Talk to me someone. As I said, I am, I am, I am, I am. He said, I am. Even though he was prophet, he said, I have unclean lips. Why? 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 Why am I lips not clean? Why? He now calculated himself. He discovered that he was mingled with the world. So, mingling with the world polluted his lips. As a prophet of God, therefore, when he speaks, Please, that's what I choose to say out of the world. I choose to be out of the world. I don't know how many months ago I called my parents for it. I don't remember what. It doesn't bother me. I know they are fine. Not that I hate them, no. I want to get to a level where the Bible says, when we read about people in the Bible that profess He it says, none of these words fall to the ground. I want to set God to a level where, like Enoch, Enoch was going to heaven and come back anytime he wanted. Are we together? Genesis 5. I think 5 to 23 to 5. Enoch was, Enoch will go to heaven and come back. Enoch was a friend of God. And Enoch never died. The Bible said he was translated. Enoch and Moses. So Enoch and Elijah. Enoch and Elijah never died. They were translated. Are we together? Moses was nobody can tell. Because if Moses died and the tomb was somewhere, they will be washing in that sure. God took him. And nobody knows. The Bible says nobody knows where Moses was there. Nobody knows. No. Only Jehovah. What am I saying? When you are friendly to the world, you cannot make heaven. If you are friendly to the world, you are just saying, God, you are my enemy. And if God is your enemy, what is your end point? Heaven is your destination. I'm just being frank and realistic here. I'm being realistic. I'm being open. I'm being realistic. I'm being, I'm being realistic. You cannot say that God is your enemy to God and you are going to God on that day. Nobody goes towards our enemy. We go away from our enemies. We go away from our enemies. So if you're an enemy to God, on that day, where do you go to? Towards God? No. Towards the Hallelujah. Towards the Hallelujah. Let's open to 1 John 5 and 10. 1 John 5 19. 1 John 5 19. You must renounce the world to see the power. Okay, 5 19 says, 1 John 5 19. Are we all there? Are we there? We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil world. The world is controlled by the spirit of disobedience, the prince of disobedience. The prince of the air now walking in those who live in disobedience, talking about the devil. He's the one in charge of the world. So if you are in if you are in love with the world, it means you love the works of the enemy, which are contrary to the works of the spirit. Are we together? That's how we together. So the whole world lies under the evil one. So the evil one, you must understand that Jesus Christ came to give us knowledge and understanding about him, Christ. About Jesus. Revelation, sorry, Romans 12, 1 says, don't be conformed. He said, do not conform to the pattern of the world anymore. Romans 12, 1. Therefore, if you are truly born again and if you are truly a believer, he said, don't be conformed to the pattern of the world. Romans 12, 1. Don't be conformed. Why? The world, because you are a stranger, you are passing by the world. So don't conform to the pattern. Rather, conform to the pattern of the kingdom of God. Conform to the pattern of the image and the likeness of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. The world is not our yes for success. Rather, Jesus Christ is. The world shouldn't be. Jesus Christ is. It's all about Jesus. So what's the heaven? So number one, we talk about announcing the world. Worldliness means what? It means viewing and viewing and doing things the way the world does. 
We see things from the eyes of the world, their perspective, and we do it the same way they do it, which is contrary to the word of God. I will tell you. Example, fashion. An example of worldliness is fashion. Have you noticed that? With the world today is controlled by fashion, entertainment, and music. The world today, fashion, entertainment, music. This is what I will tell you. If you want to be an artist to produce music today, you must belong somewhere. I will tell you. I will say the truth on Huh? <laughs> so, fashion. But first Timothy 2, verse 4. It talks about you must. When we talk about fashion here, you see, like I saw a young man the other day, he came to church wearing shorts. I give an example of what I know. Last week, Sunday. Last week, Sunday, specific. A young man came to church wearing shorts to church. That's fashion. Is that true? Is that true? Fashion, correct? Okay. Can you go to an interview with shorts? Why no? It's fashion. Why no? Can you come to church with shorts? Yes, Pastor. I saw it here. Yes, I see it. I saw it. Huh? Can you not see how we, we take the things of the world and bring it to church? Can you not see it in fashion? Can you see that? Can you see it? Fashion. So you are trying to get the world, we are losing your soul. Getting the world is good for those who want to go to hell. But if you are bringing on earth the world, the world's pleasure should not be part of what you desire. Desire Christ and Christ alone. In my father's house, there are many mansions. The mansions, he said, there are many mansions. Now, a mansion cannot stand there empty. Who can live in a mansion that is empty? No chairs, no bed, no cover, nothing, not empty. He just told about there are many mansions. A mansion are in different categories. He didn't tell us what are inside. What is inside? No, there are many mansions. Don't an idea that you should know that you have a home somewhere. Strive to enter that home. Listen to me. Strive to enter that home. This world is not your home. I am just passing by. Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you. Someone say hallelujah. Colossians 2 verse 20. Colossians 2 verse 20. So when we're talking about fashion, we see in church today, somebody will come in church naked. That's fashion. Because there's no fear of God. There's no reverence for God. No reverence for God. When you reverence Christ, Scripture says in 1 Timothy, it talks about the, 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 the adornment, godly adornment. Godly dressing is important. Fashion. Hallelujah. Colossians 2 verse 20. Are we there? Colossians 2 20 says. Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians 2 20 says. Since you died with Christ to the basic principle of this world. You died with Christ to the basic principle of this world. Why as though you are still belong to it? Do not submit to its rule. If you say you are in Christ, why are you still submitting to the principles of the world? The only thing is why are you still, if you say you are truly in Christ. He said, therefore, therefore, he says, since you died with Christ to the basic principles of the world, the world will give you nothing. The world will give you trouble. The world, the world will give you nothing. The world will give you problems, affliction. The world is perfect. But Jesus Christ will give you peace. So as a hallelujah. Alright, so the first thing is you have to renounce the world. You brought nothing into the world, you take nothing out of the world. Wisdom permits and seek Christ. Hallelujah. Number two, so the first thing is you have to renounce the world. Number two, you have to renounce evil speaking. Evil speaking. Evil speaking. Renouncing the world is good. You have to renounce evil speaking. Some of the things that he does prayers are the words we use. What we utter. And remember, you will judge according to the word.
words. Any filthy word to use, it shall be just according to that. Hallelujah. So, evil speaking is very common in church amongst believers. Evil speaking is very common. Speaking in of others for whatever reason. First Peter 2 1. Can we open? Evil speaking is not of God. Renounce it. Stop it. Renounce it. First Peter 2 1. Let's see what he says. First Peter 2 1. Are we there? No. And says. Therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. So, version says, evil speaking of every kind, carry off, renounce them. Hallelujah. Let's go to Titus 3, verse 2. We are doing Bible studies, so we have to look at scriptures which tie with what we are trying to, the point we are trying to address. Titus 3, verse 2. Are we there? Titus 3, verse 2. Titus 3, verse 2. It says, To slander no one, to speak evil of no one. Please tell me about you. No matter what a man or a woman did to you, don't speak evil against them. I'm a pastor. Please take my advice. Any advice you can take or can discard it. No matter what a person did to you, no matter what they did to you, if you are truly born again or a believer, don't speak evil against them. Don't reward evil for evil. Reward evil with good. When you reward evil with good, does not make you a weak. No, sir. Why some of us we think we still have evil because we are still having the old man. When the old man is alive, you know, when the old man is alive, we all here, all men and women, we have evil. Man was born with evil. Study psychology. Thank God I did not psychology. I study psychology. Simon Fiot says we are born with evil. Oh, Pastor, you stop. I need Pastor. Sigmund Fjord is a father of psychology. <laughs> Man is born with ego, and their ego, ego is made of three classes, three categories. I don't want to go into that. But we all hear even the smallest child has an ego. If you talk down on this young man, he will, he will start to say no. Why are you talking to ego has raised your life? Ego. So we all have ego. So ego is of the old man, not of the new man. The new man has humility, not ego. We are humble before God, before God. We are humble. The new man is humble. We don't have ego. It's the old man that has an ego. So if you are part of the old man, don't be egoistic. Rather be humble. So what I'm trying to say is, don't pay evil for evil. Rather pay evil with good. Don't speak evil of anyone, no matter what. Even if that person is right or wrong, don't speak evil of them. It's no matter what. Even if that person is wrong 100%, don't speak evil of them. Don't speak it. Even if they are wrong 100%, don't speak evil. Let it be. God sees. God is the ultimate judge. That's what I told you. You are a believer of Christ. You believe Christ? Do you believe Christ? God's vengeance is mine. So when you believe that the one who says, living vengeance is mine, means you are really a believer. Let your speech be clear. 
nations that it may benefit those who listen. Today we see evil speaking common in church and the circle of believers. Very common evil speaking. Do you think you are better than the person you are talking evil against? Do you think they are better? Listen, gentlemen, if not of the mercy and grace, no one should boast. Nobody should boast. We are not better than any other person. He, he wants you to 
partake in wrong conversation. He wants to hear what you will say. And if you are foolish also, you contribute to that and be partaker of that curse. When the Lord said, to please, I am not part of that. Sorry for that. Can you say that in front of Brother John? Oh, this is the point. If Brother John is here, can you say that before Brother John? That is a bad guy. Can you? If no, you are slandering the problem. It's slander. And if you are slandering somebody and the person is not there, means you are always behind them. So they are better than you standing there. Speak outside. I would say. Because if you are standing somebody, you are back back, back, back to Mishra and they are back. So who is better? He's in the who is better? Who is ahead? Common sense. He says, why? His heart gathers, his heart is gathering information to go and spread it. Ah, look at that sister. The way she's even walking here, eh? she's walking as if she's very pretty. Ah. She's walking as if there's nobody who is like her. Look at the way she's making her name. What is her concern? Is that your concern? That's the way she's walking. The Bible said, the one in your heart is a plan. Punish your own life first. Leave the sister alone. Check your life first. Hallelujah. Examine your own life. Your life is not better than her. What you have is a plan. That's she has the she has, she has the dust. Her own is a little better. You speaking your own is boss. Check your own life. Correct your own life. Be on your own name. Look at the way that she walks. She's walking and saying, ah, she's a pretty. That man will look at her. What is her concern? Maybe that's how she works naturally. But because she's envious, that's what we say. Am I in church? Yes, sir. It's common with women. Because she's envious, that's nobody has her time. She's envious. Now she wants to pollute somebody who might be interested in that lady. Let me continue my message. Even speaking is common in church. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 7, verse 14. Write it down, Write Mark 7, 14. Matthew 15, 11. Just write it down. Even speaking. Number 2. Mark, in Mark 7, 14 to 23. Matthew 15, 11. Let's go. So, even speaking, we have number 1, part language. Please don't use proper language. It's not of God. Number two, lying talk. Lying. Lying is a sin before God, irrespective of the reason or situation. It's, it's a sin before God. You're supposed to start work at, you're supposed to start at 8 o'clock. You came at 8 10. The manager has to open the call. Ah, no, I came 10 minutes before 8. You lied. Why? Well, because you want to solve that situation at that time. But remember, you are trying to solve a physical situation, but your record is registered before God. And the Bible says, He who lies, you are like your father, the devil, the father of liars. So when you tell lies, you are not of God. You are not a believer. If you tell lies, your father is not Jesus Christ. He's the devil, the prince of the world. Are we together? Shall we read some scriptures and see? John 8, 44. Let's see what the Bible says. John 8, 44. John 8, 44. We are looking at evil speaking. The first one is using bad language is wrong and uh, lying tongue. Lying spelling is very common in church today. Very common amongst believers. So common. 44 says, You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning. Not holding the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. He is a liar and the father of liars. See, he is a liar and the father of liars. So anyone who lies for any reason, the father is the devil. Did you say your Bible? Please read it on Colossians 3, verse 9. Colossians 3, verse 9. We are looking at, if truly I am in Christ, what are the things that I am supposed to renounce? 3, verse 9. Colossians 3, verse 9. If I am truly in Christ, what are the things I am supposed to renounce? Evil spirit, lies spirit, all of these things. 
Verse 20 says, Do not lie to each other. Is that your Bible? Colossians 3, verse 9. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off the old man, the old man is a liar. The new man is a one that speaks the truth. Jesus said, I am the word. I am the truth. So be sure that speaks the truth. In him there's no lie. In Christ there's no lie. In the devil is lies. So when you speak lies, your father is a devil. Paul says, Paul was addressing the Colossians. He said, you don't lie to each other. Since you are putting on the old self and its practices. You are taking on the old man and the practices of the old man, which is deceitful. Do not lie. It is better you speak the truth and God pass you up. Then you speak the lie and you are condemned. It's better you speak the truth. In the church of what? Yes, I'm the one that carried this thing. As, as I was going out, maybe it Mr. Cliff fell. I'm the one. Nobody will kill me. Rather, if he asks me, I give that person a cross for being honest. Not about the speaker being destroyed. No, I give him a cross for honesty. So if I'm if, so if I'm going to work with somebody, I work with that person because he's honest. No skill. He may not have any skill, but honesty. to be honest. Sure. <laughs> Before your friend become honest, you must be honest with sure. Hallelujah. Yes, Thomas said hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Thomas said hallelujah. hallelujah. Ephesians 4 verse 20. Do not lie. Ephesians 4 20. Are we learning something this after? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because whatever we are teaching here, we are not just wasting time here. We are teaching something. Jesus is coming to us. He said, 4 verse 20 says, you, however, did not come to know Christ that way. 21. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth, not lies. The truth that is in Jesus. The truth. Verse 22. You were taught with regard to your former own, your former way of life. Put up the old soul, which is being corrupted by its food. The old man is corrupted. Can never please God. Verse 23. To be made a new man in the attitude of the mind. You must put on the old man to have a new man with a new mind. And say, let the man that was in Christ also be in you. This is not possible if you are functioning in the old man. The old man is destructive. So was the So was the Verse 24. And to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Are we together? Write down Matthew 15, 18. Quickly, Matthew 15, 18. Matthew 15, 18. Let's go to Revelation 21, 7. Revelation 21, 7, please. Let's see what the Bible says about evil speaking online. We have evil speaking using our bad language, vulgar language, and also lying. Let's see what Revelation concludes. Revelation 21. Revelation 21, verse number 7. Are we all there? Are we there? He who, verse 20, chapter 21, verse 7. He who overcomes to inherit all this. And I will be his God, and he will be my son. Verse 8. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, those who are not believers, those who are not born again, the unbelieving, the fail, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all. And all liars, their place will be in the fire lake of burning sulfur. This is the second. So they cannot inherit the kingdom of God when they us. Did you see your Bible? Ah, Pastor, I just lied to you. Lies now. See the city for God. What are you lying? 
that small that uh, you came at eight of you, you came at five minutes past eight, and someone went and did uh, computer your yeah, online like that they have a company. Uh, I have a company. I said, go oh, send me that money. They said the money. You are all the same. Life is. So why do you want to make go to a place where because of uh, I came five minutes past? Just I came at so I came five minutes late. Oh uh, yeah, man, sir, I came five minutes late. Today I came five minutes late. I'm sorry, sir. If I'm the one, I'm very happy with such a person. Very happy. Why? They are not. So I came far, I came late today. I'm sorry, sir. The end is there. Better. That should be it. But I said, no. I came before him. You can go and check. He knows he came after. Hey, that is very common. Nice spelling. I came before him. I know what I'm talking about. I go and go and check. He knows. And when you go and check the time, and what happens? They start to see the time. And they say, one and one. What are these people? I came in five minutes for it. Look at the commission since you came. So it's usually you came 10 minutes to it. They say she came after it. Who is that? Ah, no, that company is wrong. That, that, that company is wrong. Check it out, that's a problem. That's a problem. And that's the person that didn't even worship in church. Is that true? Because pastor is not there. But God has to work. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 27. Revelation 21, verse 27. That's okay. 27 says, verse 27. Nothing in you will ever enter it. Talking about the kingdom of God or heaven. Now, will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Renounce the of the world. Renounce the evil spirit. Shall we 